pictures of there recently. Business purposes. Yeah, quite a few of those recently. It's funny though. Yeah, it's obviously not. Yeah, you know which one's the real one. <laughs> what is that? I like Kenneth. Kenneth's lovely. He's a good lad. Yeah, he's a very funny guy. Yeah, man. Um. Yeah. Uh, no, well, I didn't see him. I seen him a few weeks ago. I saw him last week. But yeah, but then last week we were, we were really busy, so we didn't really get to have certain chat. So, are we starting our session? Edward? Are we starting our questions now, mate? Yeah, no worries. Your sound keeps dropping in and out, just you know. He's just dropped out again as he was talking there. I'm right here at the moment. Yeah, I can hear you now. And he's gone again. I like to say it's quiet, right? I'm not. Ah, okay. No worries. I have to move one second ahead. That's fine. Uh, we're live now on YouTube. Before, why not wait another minute? We need to do it now. We're waiting, uh, ending outwards, so we will be uh, going out on the road. And um, before we get into my guest, I want to say this is, uh, I posted on Instagram uh, two days ago. Uh, this is a secret Santa present. Somebody actually made this for me, so thank you very much to that person. Look at that. It's I got my own merch now. Um, so that's the back of it. You can see that again. It's not for sale. It, we haven't got many of them. So please don't ask. Uh, we have, I'm not saying merch just yet. Um, we welcome live here on December 21st, the shortest day of the year. We're joined by uh, a fellow candidate from this year's The Apprentice. And I can guarantee this show will go much better than last time we had someone put The Apprentice on because we had some echoing difficulties, but we fixed those. And uh, please welcome on the marketing expert and the, 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 the future of uh, traveling. So uh, that should be interesting. We get into that. Of course, uh, Lewis Alice, welcome to my show. Of course, he's one of the founders of Hidden Travel. Is that right? Yeah, that's right indeed. Hidden Travel without the E. Yeah. Spelled incorrectly. This is my trademark, that. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's your trademark, actually, isn't it? Yeah, you you never check your spine, do you? Before you just you just submit without trouble checking. Apparently so. <laughs> I actually, I, I purposely spelled it wrong, though, because uh, I just thought it sounded cool. It's, it's quite a cool domain, and it was easy to remember. Yeah, it is. It is easy to remember, and you're doing a very good job at it. So uh, we look forward to it, and, uh, you know... Leave a comment, so let us know what you're going to happen. Let us know if you've got any comments for my guest. He's here for half an hour. He's a busy man, as he says. And, uh, you know, um, let's talk about your business now. Why you've gone into a travel business and instead of doing something in marketing? What's, it, what's going on there? Uh, so I worked in travel for a very long time. And I, I never felt really happier than when I was working abroad. So I always thought, 
<laughs> one day I'm actually going to start a company and I'm going to work in travel and I'm going to reinvent what I was experiencing. I'm going to do something really amazing and cool. And now it seems like the right time. Now it's absolutely right because there's, um, there's like a massive gap in the market for it. Interesting, interesting. Because 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 what's happened with uh, Thomas Cook? Is that why? Is that why you think is a um, uh, you know a caught in the market because there's no more Thomas Cook? You know, don't, don't, don't cook it, Thomas Cook. It's gone. So you want to replace them maybe in the future? No, it's not. It's not replacing Thomas Cook. It's doing something completely different and a more future-proof business model. A lot of the a lot of the tour operators and travel agents have always focused on providing the cheapest holidays and getting absolute minimum costs. And because of that, what happens is they they lose a lot of the, what makes a holiday special. They cut costs everywhere. The food's terrible. The staff don't get paid. The staff are miserable. You know, you're all packed onto a coach and herded like cattle. And I just, I don't think that's the future. I don't see that as an aspirational holiday. A holiday is supposed to be an amazing escape. It's supposed to be relaxing. It's supposed to be something you save up for and look forward to all year long or maybe two years in advance you aspire to go on it. I just don't see that at the moment in any kind of holiday that I see out there. Unless you go really, really luxury yeah. and you go bespoke. I don't see it. And I, I, a lot of people don't have 10, 20 grand to spend on a holiday. So how can I bring that element of premium, an element of luxury into into travel, but at the same time, keep it young and youthful and keep it fun and friendly and also put people the same sort of age together and also do amazing experiences together. That's what I'm trying to do. I don't, I don't, I'm not competing with anyone else. I'm not trying to do what anyone else is doing. I'm doing what I enjoy. And basically, I've made a holiday for myself mm-hmm. that I would like to go on. And that's, that's it. There's nothing that I would book out there right now. There isn't. And, and because of that, I'm just making it. Nice. Nice. And you want to go to, uh, is the dream holiday to go to Croatia still? Or, or are you choosing somebody else, somewhere else to go for the, because you want to go um, next summer. It's going to launch. Is that correct? Your, your, your tour business is going to launch next year. Is that right? Ne- next summer-ish? Yeah, so the first tours will be going live in Jan, Feb time. So okay. probably end of January, beginning of February, we'll have our first um, holidays on offer. We don't know where we're going. We haven't decided locations yet. We've looked at quite a few destinations. I really want it to be an amazing first tour. I want it to be somewhere fantastic. Yeah. And trying to decide on where that's going to be is a difficult part. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for what the future holds in terms of bringing that to market. Yeah, yeah. It is. It, it's going to be exciting for yourself and to everybody else who appeal on The Apprentice. And uh, so, so let's jump into that then. Uh, you know, what made you join the uh, did, to apply for The Apprentice? Did someone did it for you, or did you decide to do it to see? You know, why not? You know. Sorry, I'm just I'm doing work at the same time. Uh, no, what it was, I I decided to I decided to apply because I've always watched the show and I thought what an amazing opportunity to be to on there one day. I didn't actually expect to get on there. I didn't think that I'd have a chance. I was surrounded by thousands and thousands of successful people, successful business owners, and I didn't think that I'd stand a chance. But I think what, what, sh- what shone through for me was my passion and my personality as well as what I've done in business and also what I'd want to achieve. Because although I've never um, owned a company before, I've been freelancing for quite a while. I've had my own clients. I've been working my way up in marketing. I've been um, successful in my career so far. I've got a few degrees. I sort of, I sort of went in there with, like, oh, he's a credible candidate. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wasn't just doing some. I wasn't just some guy that you know worked in a shop and decided I was going to go on there one day. But it's something that my passion's always been around business. So this is uh, the perfect opportunity to get to get into it. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, and, and was it everything you expected it would be? Going on the Apprentice, being uh, you know, getting some exposure for yourself and for your business as well. Yeah, I think I think in terms of I didn't expect the amount of personal exposure. So I expected. You know, it sounds silly, but I didn't realize just how much we would be personally scrutinized about that. I didn't think that was a thing. I, I always thought that, yeah, well, they look at you on the show, they take the mick out of what's going on, and then they follow your business journey. But actually, a lot of people are believing in us as candidates and us as people and our journey and what we're trying to achieve, and they buy into us, which is, I didn't realize that that's what it is. So actually, although everyone's seen Hidden Travel, they're buying into me as a person, as the person that's going to bring it to market. So I didn't realize coming out of it that that's what people would be messaging me about it's not so much about hidden travel it's more about what oh, we believe in you Lewis we think you can do it rah rah um, and they, they they like the concept so yeah I didn't realise it would be as as personal uh, like about your personal brand more on business I thought it would be all about business brands gotcha gotcha makes sense makes sense and uh, you know uh, you got to the uh, you 
to the final five you're the last man standing in the apprentice so uh big congrats on that aspect of things as well being the last man yeah. in the uh, in the house and everything and uh, you know was the was the interview process very hard because we saw it on tv and we thought this is very tough and some very tough questions and you know did you find it did you think it was tough as well you know from watching it back maybe as well or did you think it wasn't it was a bit easy maybe through the in interview no, process I think that if anyone's ever going to go into the show, the one thing they should be aware of is that it's not easy. There's nothing easy about it. Nothing from physical tasks, actually doing the task, aren't, they're not easy. Living with people that you're competing against, that's not easy. Mm. Not sleeping, um, you know, not, not being allowed any downtime, not being allowed to be on your own, uh, not being allowed to contact home. All these things aren't easy. And unless you've been in that situation, you're not going to get it. So I, I, when I went in there, I always thought, they always they said things like, you know, you, you, when you finish the show, you'll be a part of a sort of sorority of people that get what you're talking about. So you'll reach out to the candidates and they'll get it. And I didn't realize what they meant by that until now. So whereas, if you're looking from the outside, you think, oh, they're just doing stupid stuff. But if you look at week 10, compared to week one, me, yeah. I, was, I was knackered. I bagged them eyes. I was really tired. I was drained. I was half the size. I've not been training. I've not been eating properly. Like, I was done. And I'm making silly mistakes because of how emotionally and physically draining it is but also at the same time it's an amazing experience so yeah i wouldn't have changed it but i mean it was it's not easy anything but easy fair enough fair enough and uh you know um i listened to an interview uh with uh you know your fellow candidate uh oh. tom skinner tommy skinner and mm -hmm. he is a you know one of the best people around isn't he did you get along with him yeah i talked i was talking to him last night actually um, <laughs> and my I think uh, I think he's a fantastic lad. He's just a nice, genuine guy. Like yourself, like yourself. You're very nice and uh, very friendly as well. And you come across as who you are. I I I, I think. I think that's it. Like uh, you know, I didn't go on to this show to to pretend to be anyone that I'm not. I didn't go on there to <laughs> try and put on an act or pretend that I'm some sort of person, business person. I'm, I went on there just to be me. Yeah. I didn't go on there. I didn't change. To, to, to match anyone's expectations I was just myself I stayed myself um, for better or for worse yeah is, is there any of the uh, candidates uh, you got along with pretty well like cause, you know there's some of them I think just did it for the TV like I think Ryan Mark just did it for the TV I think it's a completely different person outside of TV same with Lottie Lyon I think she just did it all for the TV you know but is were they the same off camera as well and, and, and who did you get along with the most I, well, I don't know about any of that where you just said I don't know uh, what people did it for but in terms of uh, who I get along with I speak to Dean Tom uh, Ryan Mark Gemmelin Pamela Karina Scarlett like everyone I, we talk every day not, maybe not every single day but we always are in communication with each other always talking to each other always giving each other support so yeah that's nice that's nice to know and you mentioned somebody actually there you mentioned about um, Pamela uh, we've been in tough negotiations uh, with Pamela um, so um, we are looking forward to having Pamela on this very show soon um, is, is there anything you can give us to maybe prepare for her when she comes on the show uh, no I don't think you can really prepare it's just Pamela's a great girl she's a really nice person um, she's really genuine as well I think if you're going to talk to her um, I, I, she's a very busy lady I wouldn't I wouldn't waste time talking about anything apart from uh, the business, who she is as a person, what she's trying to achieve. I think that's what she, that's what she, she's there for. She's, she's, she's got a really successful business and she wants to scale it. So, you know, I think that's what you should talk to her about. I think yeah. you should talk to her about Moxie, where it came from. It's football on, by the way. Yeah. Um, I yeah. talked to her about Moxie, where, where, it, where she came from, what her journey was and, and where she is today and what she's looking to do next. That's what I talked to her about. That's good. That's good. Right, thank you for those good comments. We'll mention, we mentioned we we will talk about all those comments and more. Uh, there's one thing I, I want to talk to you about. Now you were in my area, my hometown, last Friday night. Uh, I think it was last Friday night uh, for the boxing uh, ultimate boxing live on BT Sports. You were in, you were in you invaded my location, my hometown. Um, you had a very good night uh, because uh, you've met some good people. You you met uh, you know you got a picture. Uh, with I'm a, you know with a great boxer you know and it was great you know uh, did you did yeah. you knew you're gonna meet him? No, no, I went in there and actually um, his security guard uh, came over to me and started talking about the apprentice. Oh. So I was just like, oh okay. Um, he goes, I'm looking after Amir Khan. So I said, 
Oh, well, introduce me. Um, I'll say hello. So he went and grabbed him and grabbed him for a quick chat and a quick picture. It was nice. Yeah, it was nice to meet someone. I was, there was a lot of cool people there that day, actually. I made some, I made some nice friends. I actually went out with some people from there this, this weekend. That's good. That's good. You know, after the event, you were... Uh, you took some pictures on Instagram and, uh, you know, partying in Ontringham, uh, you know, giving a shout to Ontringham now, uh, my hometown. Um, so we're glad that you are another celebrity to spend your time in the great market town of Ontringham. You're not the first. Uh, Justin Bieber uh, was the first, I think. And then uh, Rain Rooney also came to Ontringham a few weeks ago as well for a date night. And then we get the ultimate boxing here. And it brings Lewis Alice to Ontringham as well. Will we see you back again soon? Well, I, I hope so. There's some cool bars down there. I think I'll be coming down at some point. <laughs> good, 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 good. We look forward to that. And uh, maybe maybe at some point in the future we can actually uh, meet in person. And uh, that, that should be an interesting experience for both of us here. Yeah. Um, but uh, let, let, let's talk about, um, again, back to your business and in travel. Uh, they're on the social media so tell us tell us where 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 they can find uh, your company on social media because you can plug it yeah like the yeah well look at hidden travel without the e so hidden without the e, h-i-d-d-n travel uh is on twitter it's on instagram and um, you can just go and go, uh, go and find the website hidden travel.com where the website is still in build at the moment actually we're having problems with it today we can't um people can't subscribe for updates but usually you leave your email address and i communicate to you via email uh, what's going on and where we're looking at going that sort of stuff but at the moment uh, MailChimp has gone down so that we've found uh, and yeah that's the best place to follow us or just follow my personal account and I'll, and I'll obviously I'll chat to you about if you have me I'll chat to you about it on my stuff. yeah yeah and again you can find uh, Lewis Ellis on Twitter and Instagram they're on your screen right now I'm Lewis Ellis I, 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 I like that uh, handle on Twitter uh, and of course on, on uh, Instagram it's Lewis underscore Ellis underscore very very complicated on there couldn't you, couldn't you do the I'm Lewis Ellis on Instagram no apparently there's so many Lewis Ellis out there I had to do that oh, I couldn't even right. do Lewis Ellis one I'm Lewis Ellis I'm underscore Lewis Ellis is taken very uh, very very famous name apparently but I've only <laughs> ever met one, one Lewis Ellis before well, you are the most famous Lewis Ellis out of all, I'm, I'm going to say, because, you know, not I bet not even be on TV like you. Well, so I don't know any of the Lewis Ellis that are uh, in the public eye at the moment, so I guess I'm the only one now. Yeah, there you go. you got something to be a proud of, you know. And, uh, you know, are you are you going to be asking, you know, if these um, tours of yours are going to be doing next year go very successful? Will you be trying to get maybe some of the celebrities to come on these holidays with you as well? Uh, I don't know about celebrities, it's open to anyone, so, I mean, I don't care if you're a celebrity or if you're working in office, if you want to come on a, on a tour with us, we'll treat everyone the same and we'll have an amazing experience. Now, I imagine quite a lot of young, exciting people are going to come, so, and because it is so different, um, I'm hoping we'll, we'll get some cool characters. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. We hope so, we hope so. I, I look forward to it, I think it'll be a good business and, uh, and I can see it can be something different which nobody's seen before so I wish you the best of luck for that and also as well if you did win the money by the way if you did win the money £250,000 from Alan Sugar would it go to maybe opening up uh, maybe a building or something where people come in and maybe as he do stuff in the building no. maybe no I don't really I don't really believe you need to have a, a, a location anymore I don't think that's the way of the world I know that if I'm going to book a holiday I don't go and sit in a tour operator or a travel agent but I go online I find where I'm trying to go to and I put it together so I don't think that a physical location was my plan my plan was very much to to, to get out to these destinations make deals with hotel suppliers make deals with to try the experiences make sure they're fantastic and then go from there so that was my plan um, now obviously I haven't got that anymore so I have to get creative I'm, I'm going to do this with zero yeah actual zero and I think if I, can, if I can do that and I can prove that you can start a business with zero pounds then that'll be a much more inspirational story and f and also well, just to prove the cricket the credits one well like the uh, you know adding sugar claude all them people saying that uh, it, they don't think it's going to work out you can prove them all wrong and say actually you were wrong i'm successful at this and you made a big mistake for not investing in my business no i don't think i'll do that i think um it's not so much that they made a big mistake or anything like that they didn't they made the mistake they judged sorry they didn't make a mistake they judged um, my business plan accordingly and it is a startup and it is a risk um now, when I do get off the ground, it's successful. All I hope is that they see what I've managed to achieve. I don't care about saying, oh, I, you should invest in me, because it's not about that at all. Um, it's very much more like, 
look at what I've done, guys. I went from the process, I took your advice, I created this, look at what I've achieved, and that's what I want to turn around and say to everyone one day, look what I did. And I proved even a guy from no, humble beginnings can create something amazing, and that's my aim. My aim is not to go, look at what I did and show it in people's face because that's yeah. not, I'm not a spiteful person. I'm not, I don't see any point in that. In that. Like, he hasn't made a mistake. He judged me fairly and accordingly. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to go and do this for everyone that's ever thought it was impossible. I think that's what I'm trying to do. I, I'm, I'm going to have to go, though. I'm, I'm afraid. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, one last thought, though. Um, one last question for you. You made a video with Kenna. Um, did it receive um, good points? Did anyone like what happened with that video? You know, it was it was a fantastic little advert. So it was uh, a guy I know. I met him a long time ago. He started his own company from a digital agency. He went to a, an e-commerce platform and he built that himself. And it's a very, very, very good platform. So when he reached out and said, "Do you mind featuring in the video?" Because we were relevant at the time, I thought, "Why the hell not?" And then yeah, that's it. So Kenny was there. And I was there. It was really it was a fun day. It was a great day filming. But it's not about us, it's about the product. The product's fantastic. And if anyone is considering an e-commerce platform um, and they don't want to try Shopify, they want to try something else, they should check it out because they're, they they kind of pay as you go. There's no, there's no monthly fees and they scale with yourself. Whereas, I don't know if you know much about e-commerce, if you have a small business to scale up to a large business, it generally gets quite expensive. Yeah. Um, complicated, but for, for them, they kind of scale with you and, and grow and, and shrink. So, yeah. There we go. And one, one last question as well. Will we see uh, you and Kenna doing more videos like these in the future? I don't know. If people ask us to, I think we'll be up for it. Me and Kenna live near each other and we're, we're friendly with each other. So I think, yeah, I think looking ahead, me and Kenna will probably do some cool stuff together. So it means you both live in North Manchester, the Wolf bit. Uh, I'm guessing you're a Man City fan. Um, no, I don't watch. You're not? I don't watch. No. That's good to know. Because, because, I mean, yeah, because you're in there, yeah, a football stadium, uh, a football bar where there's Man City fans are at, so just asking. Yeah, yeah well, no, they're, they're, it's, uh, it's actually a hotel. I'm sat in the coffee area, but there's quite a lot of people watching the football. So. All right, okay. Well, uh, oh, and it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, sorry about the interruption. That was Lewis Alice on the O'Fowler show. Um, right, so now let's talk about something else for you. Here, this interview is over, but we've still got things to talk about. We've got a quick video to show you about. I'm going to turn that off and open that. That's not the right one. Oops, today is he? I've gotten weird. I must have got rid of it. Uh, or maybe I haven't. There we go. There we go. That's what we're going to show you. Uh, <laughs> here we go. So, um, don't you want to bring your car back to showroom finish by a fully IMI credited master detailer? Get in touch with RS Bespoke Auto Detailing on Instagram at RS underscore Bespoke underscore auto underscore detailing and also on Twitter at Bespoke underscore RS. She details it like she owns it. You can see a video of a car uh, the, the the owner has recently done. So check them out on Instagram, also on Twitter. Uh, there you go. Right, there you go. What an interview, by the way, that was uh, with Lewis Alice there, live from a hotel of all places in Manchester. North Manchester is not a football fan. Uh, we just learned that out. And that video was 100% better than what we did with Kenna. So I apologize to Kenna. Uh, Nagoma uh, for the difficulties we had with his interview last week uh, and I'm going to reach out to him sometime next year and do it in person because that's what I want to do. I want to do interviews in person and I'm hoping at some point in the new year or even before the new year I'll post one on Instagram uh, of my new uh, and improved setup. Um, but yeah, there you go. That is the final show on December 21st, 2019. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, with Lewis Alice said a special guest and I did say to you before that I am in negotiations with Pamela who is also from The Apprentice 2019 um, we were going to do it uh, some well we were going to do it on Tuesday this week but unfortunately something came up um, so we have to reschedule but I've not heard anything from Pamela yet so if you just watch this video 
Pamela. Hope you can get back in touch with me and uh, set something up in January with myself. Uh, we also just had the one pitch today. We also had Jack Rose's uh, Twitter account. Give me a free, a free plug to Jack Rose. We are hoping to have Jack Rose on the show as well. We just said yes again. Apparently, it's the busiest time of the year for Jack Rose. So uh, we're not going to pester him. Uh, we're not going to, uh, you know, we're going to wait for them to contact me. Uh, hopefully, we can get something up for January or February again. Uh, this is my absolutely uh, secret Santa cup. Don't ask me where I got this from. I didn't make it myself. It was from a secret Santa uh, from my uh, personal work. So uh, thank you very much for the person who created that uh, for me. It's very good. I love it. And uh, you're going to be seeing it uh, more times on the future of the Earth Father show as well. Hope you enjoyed tonight's video on December 21st, 2019. And this may be the last episode. I said to you last week that it was the last episode. I don't know. So I'm not going to say it again because I might be wrong. So what I'm going to say is if there's not another video before Christmas Day, then have an amazing Christmas. And if there's not a video before New Year's Day, then have an amazing New Year as well. And from everyone from the uh, Father Show Studios, good night from us here this evening. Thank you.